tied or tumor immune dysfunction and exclusion is a computational framework developed by the Shirley Liu Lab. If you are a new user, you must first register with your name, email, and institution in order to access the TIDE website. Response prediction to immune checkpoint blockade is one of several functions on the TIDE website and can be accessed through the menu bar on the top of the TIDE webpage. In this video tutorial, you will learn how to use the predict response function. In order to use this tool, you must first input some data, which includes a gene expression file, cancer type, and information about previous immunotherapy. First, input your gene expression file by clicking the Choose File button and selecting the file from your computer. The data should be formatted in a square matrix in which each column represents the patient ID and each row represents a gene name. The gene names can either be entered as a symbol name, for example, TGFB1, or an entrance ID, for example, 7040. Please look at the test samples linked at the bottom of the page for more information regarding formatting. In this tutorial, I will use the top test sample as my gene expression file. Please note that the gene expression value should be normalized towards a control sample, which could either be normal tissues related with a cancer type or mixture sample from diverse tumor samples. The direct values from an RNA sequencing experiment, such as TPM or FPKM, will not be meaningful unless a good reference control is available to adjust the batch effect and cancer type difference. We recommend a log transformation of all values into the form of log2 TPM plus 1 or log2 FPKM plus 1. Then for each gene, please normalize by subtracting the expression value in your reference control sample or average value across all patients in your cohort. For log transformed values, subtracting the reference value is equal to computing the log fold change ratio between your input and control samples. Next, select the patient's cancer type. The two types of cancer for which TIDE can predict a response are melanoma and non spall cell lung cancer, or NSCLC. Although there is an option for other types of cancer, TIDE may not work for types of cancer other than melanoma and NSCLC and therapies other than anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4. Currently, we are actively developing prediction methods for other types of cancer and immunotherapy, so please check back regularly to see our new progress. Lastly, please select whether the patients have been previously treated with immunotherapy. Since a previous immunotherapy will change the response prediction rule, please select yes if it applies. However, earlier treatments of targeted therapies or chemotherapies do not count, and in this case, please select no. Once you have inputted the appropriate data, you can click the blue predict response button to receive the response prediction. The results of the response prediction include a chart and a table. The chart shows each patient's tide value, with the patient on the left having the highest tide value and the patient on the right having the lowest. The patients with the blue bars or the positive tide values are non-responders to ICB, while the ones with red bars or negative tide values are responders. The tide score threshold is automatically set at zero, but it can be set to any number between zero and one by using the box above the chart. The selection of threshold depends on your purpose. If you only care about the accuracy of predicting non-responders, we recommend a high threshold, such as one. In contrast, if you hope to find patients who are likely responders, we recommend a low threshold, such as zero. In order to see the data in more detail, you can hover over each bar to see the exact tide value for each patient. You can also view only either the non-responders or the responders by deselecting the other group at the bottom of the chart. If you would like to print or download this chart, you can do so by clicking the button on the upper right hand corner. Now, if you scroll down beneath the chart, there is also a table containing additional information about each patient. The first column simply lists the patients. The second column, no benefits, lists the predicted strong non-responders to immune checkpoint blockade based on a combination of tide signatures and interferon gamma. According to our experience, combining the information from both tide and interferon gamma signatures can improve the accuracy of predicting non-responders. 
Similarly, the responder column lists the predicted responder status of each patient, but solely based on tide values. The tide column shows the tide prediction score of each patient. A higher value in this column indicates that the patient has a higher potential of tumor immune evasion and is therefore less likely to benefit from ICB. The IFNG column lists the interferon gamma response biomarkers of six genes, including IFNG, STAT1, IDO1, CXCL10, CXCL9, and HLA-DRA. Next, the MSI score, or predict microsatellite status, is the score of a trained linear regression model that is applied to the user input expression matrix. The CD274 column simply is the gene's expression value, and the CD8 column is an average expression of the CD8A and CD8B genes. The next column, CTL flag, is defined by the level of cytotoxic T lymphocyte, or CTL. High levels of CTL correspond to true, while low levels correspond to false. The dysfunction column lists each patient's T-cell dysfunction potential of the tumor, while the exclusion column lists the T-cell exclusion potential of the tumor. The last three columns, MDSC, CAF, and TAMM2, all represent the Pearson correlation between the input expression file and the column signature. In order to view a description of each column, you can hover your mouse over the column title. Also, if you would like to sort any of the columns, you can just click on the title of the column that you would like to sort. You now know how to use the predict response function to predict a patient's clinical response to immune checkpoint blockade. For more information, you can read the TIDE paper that is linked down below or visit the FAQ page on the TIDE website. Please also feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.